booktube this is kelly with books i'm not reading and i'm here today to do my first quarter wrap up of the year and to let you know what i'm hoping to read in the second quarter um so april may and june um this is my second attempt at this video so uh i'm gonna try to fly through it a little bit quicker than I did in the first attempt. So I'm not going to spend any time talking about these books because I've already devoted videos to them. So of course the first five books in the Betsy Tacey series for the Betsy Tacey read along, which I hope that it's, you know, it's still not too late to join in. Um, the books read very fast. I also read um, Death Wears a Mask by Ashley Weaver and I read that as a buddy read with um, My Reading Life. That was awesome. And then of course The Immortal Irishman by Timothy Egan for the Irish Readathon. The other books I read um, in the first quarter of the year were a little bit disappointing, but I think things are finally starting to turn around. So, um, well, for one thing, I do want to mention that I am in the midst of a poetry project with Brian from Bookish. So I have been reading, you know, a little poetry here and a little poetry there, but not actually a book of any poetry. So that's not really reflected in um, the number of books I've read, but um, so the first one is um, Don't Let's Go to the Dogs Tonight by Alexander Fuller. Alexandra Fuller, excuse me. Um, I thought this was going to be more interesting and funnier and maybe more about Africa than it actually was. I'm not holding on to it. We'll put it that way. Um, the next one is Mrs. Mike um, by Benedict and Nancy Friedman. Um, they wrote a sequel to this book um, called The Search for Joyful, and I think that's where this edition comes from. It was a reprint um, to promote the, the, the new sequel. Again, not a bad book, not a book I would say don't read. I just, I just didn't really, um, the love story was just too quick, I guess, for my taste. So I like things to be stretched out a little bit longer when it comes to romance. So, um, but it was still an interesting, an interesting book. Again, I'm going to be um, sharing this with a free library or something like that. The next book is Blankets um, by Craig Thompson, uh, which is kind of a autobiographical uh, graphic novel, and um, Jason. Uh, used to teach this to college students and the college students always really loved it been kind of curious about it and I thought January or early early this year in the winter would be a good time um, and I have to say the illustrations in this book are phenomenal um, breathtaking at times even however I just um, as a person of faith, and I realize that many, many people have been hurt by the church in very, very serious ways. Here's a great look at that. I don't know how you guys can see that, but I mean, just spectacular. So I realize the church has hurt very many people in some ways more horrific than others, but just um, another church that, you know, uh, thinks homosexuality is a sin. Uh, it just it was a very one-dimensional portrait of, of a church, which, but it, it could be, I mean, it could have been his experience. It just, it's just a bummer. I mean, I grew up in the church and I had, was surrounded by a lot of adults who are really encouraging, really supportive, um, in my dreams and you know all that kind of stuff so um it's just a bit sad to, to always kind of be reading the same story over and over again um the next book i read i wasn't planning on it, it was for it's for my um book club and um this was selected by laura uh who is hopefully going to be having her own booktube channel here soon and um, this is The Volcano Lover by Susan Sontag. I was 
you know, I just wasn't sure what to think of this. It's about real people, though. Um, it's about Sir William Hamilton, um, his second wife, Emma, and um, Lord Nelson. Uh, and uh, Nels Lord Nelson of, like, the Battle of Trafalgar and of Trafalgar Square kind of fame. Uh, and yeah, it was it was quite a fascinating read, and I think kind of again, um, like the Timothy Egan book that I was talking about yesterday, um, really was just sort of a wake up call as to how familiar I am with world history. So definitely an area that I might want to work on in the future. But I really enjoyed this book. Um, I, yeah, I. I found it fascinating and um, there's a lot of great metaphors and themes in it so anyway if you've read this book or any of the books I'm talking about let me know what you think so and I'm also oh, also currently reading with Madeline from Made With Books um, James Baldwin's Go Tell It on the Mountain so we just started that like this weekend but I'm, so I'm hoping early April we will we'll be done with it, which I realize is like tomorrow. Again, I don't want to spend a lot of time on some of these books, but these are some of the things I'll be reading in the next three months. So the second book um, in this particular volume of the Betsy Tacy series, so Betsy in spite of herself. And then of course we have Betsy was a junior and Betsy and Joe. And then um, for the poetry portion of things, um, Brian from Bookish and I have made kind of a tentative schedule of, of poets we want to read. And so in April, we're reading Gary Snyder. And um, both of us, I think, are struggling a little bit. I, I just, we just haven't done, I, I personally haven't spent very much time on it yet. So. Okay, we'll get to that. Um, and then um, the following month, May, um, we'll be reading some Anne Sexton poems. And then for June, um, possibly Leaves of Grass by Walt Whitman. We'll see how that goes. <laughs> so the rest of my TBR <laughs> for the second quarter will look very familiar to you because these are the things I said I was going to read also in the first quarter, and I didn't read them. Now, many of you would say that Bear Town is a winter book, but I live in a place where we go from winter straight into summer. There is no spring, or if there is spring, it's like a week long. So um, I still feel like I can read this one. Um, I'm, I'm really upset with myself, actually, for not getting to um, this collection of Jane Austen, but um, this is going to be a high priority for me in April. And then um, the Raymond Carver stories, where I'm calling from, which I've heard some strange comments about Raymond Carver on booktube. Do you guys think that Raymond Carver actually didn't write his own stories, that he was too drunk to do it? Does somebody out there believe that? <laughs> you can let me know in the comments section. I think I'm gonna try to split it up um, by quarter. Uh, just to make it a little bit more manageable. Uh, unlike poetry where, well, I don't know. I mean, I feel like I, I, did, I, I read one story in this book <laughs> in the first quarter, so I guess, I guess I've done something with it, but um, I'm wondering if maybe if I divided it up over a couple quarters, if that would be a little bit more manageable. But again, this is a book I've owned for more than 20 years probably so it's really time to read these and see what I think. I've read quite a few short story collections so uh yeah I, I'm not I'm not intimidated by this one I just had other things to read. Uh then of course there's this like a little ancient copy of The Fur Person and um I, this is one I expect to read and then just kind of pass on. There is a new edition of it I saw online, so that's good to know that it, it's, um, someone thought it was worthy enough of, of reprinting. <laughs> that's an encouraging sign. So, um, so I'm planning on reading those. I don't have a copy with me, but I do have a buddy read scheduled with, um, Literary Labors 
for June, we're going to read The Adventures of Tom Sawyer, so I'm very excited about that. Um, and then in April, uh, Joe Smith and I are planning to read The Old Curiosity Shop by Charles Dickens. So I haven't read any Dickens for a little while, but I, I'm really excited, although Oh man, like Dickens. Look at the type in this. I'm gonna go blind. <laughs> anyway, it's gonna be great. I'm really, I'm really looking forward to reading this with Joe, so that'll be fun. And then there is a mystery book because. April is when the Pulitzer Prize is announced. And for those of you who maybe haven't been watching my channel for very long, I, um, quite a while ago, decided to read all of the books that have won the Pulitzer Prize for fiction, um, or some of them it was initially called the Pulitzer Prize for the novel. So I read all of those books. Um, and I read a few of them that were uh, nominated, but but not chosen. Um, so I definitely feel like we need to talk about the Pulitzer Prize in April and whatever book is chosen, I will immediately um, probably put it on hold at the library um, because I'm sure our library will get one copy of it. Um, hopefully they already own it, but um, I have no idea. I haven't looked, uh, looked at the prediction list a little while ago, but um, you know, there's nothing I read so much kind of backlist, so much stuff that I've, I've had for a long time that um, I don't I don't really read uh, new contemporary fiction. So, so that'll be interesting to see um, what is chosen. But we'll definitely spend some time in April talking about the Pulitzer Prize, and I'll try to give you guys some recommendations if you're interested. Um, on uh, great Pulitzer Prize books to read. So, okay, <sighs> did it. We got through the first quarter. Looking forward to the second quarter. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to be kind to yourself, be kind to others, and I'll talk to you soon, booktube. Take care, bye-bye.